Hey guys, another day back in Town Hall again, and I'm in the paper for a Ford White Oak. Remember that one about the Shades uh, place? Well, it's in the paper now on Looking Back. So yeah, a lot of people commenting. It's been quite popular to get a bit of uh, reminiscence, so pretty good. Right, I'm off to work now. See you later. Madam Mayor, following a recent Freedom of Information Act request, I note that calls to 101 are taking an increasing amount of time to answer, resulting in over a 56% increase in the number of abandoned 101 calls in 2016 compared to 2015. In addition, your only eight calls to 101 took more than an hour to answer in 2015, while in 2016 there were 91 calls taking an hour or more to answer. That's an increase of 1,137.5%. On a minute-by-minute -minute comparison for the time to answer 101 calls between 2015 and 2016, there is a pronounced increase in waiting times in every category except the lowest, i.e., calls taking a minute or less to answer. The view from many in the minority communities that I've spoken to is that hate crime is not dealt with anywhere near effectively enough anywhere in the country. We all know just how quickly incidents can be brushed aside without proper investigation, and in many cases we've all experienced just how powerless the police are when those who engage in hateful behaviour refuse to accept any responsibility for their actions, but moreover, I think we can all agree that where people do take responsibility, the sentences are far too low. This is an important issue, and it's one that I can, cannot stress greatly enough, has a very real and pronounced effect on many members of the community from all walks of life. You don't have to be the target of hate crime to appreciate the devastating effects that it can have. Madam Mayor, I am very much in favour of not charging the victims of domestic abuse for the evidence letter they need to access justice. I am not, however, in favour of trying to lay the blame on those who are not at fault. That's exceptionally badly worded. And, and it lets those who are actually causing the problem off the hook. Blame should be laid where blame is due. So ask the member opposite these questions. Has he spoken to the services who are charging for these evidence letters? Has he explained the situation to them and tried to get them to stop causing this undue cost and undue suffering for the most vulnerable in our town? Or has he not bothered and is simply coming to us tonight to have a call to the government? These are serious questions. Well, guys, I'm exhausted today. It's been a long day, and funnily enough, it hasn't. I went to bed early yesterday because I was feeling ill and woke up at half past 11, something like that. So... I had to basically rush to get down to town because I had a lot to do today. So there hasn't been much time for filming because I had speeches to write, council to go to, a lot of paperwork to deal with, and it's just been a nightmare. But it's done. I'm exhausted again, and I'm not fully uh, over whatever it is knocked me sideways yesterday, but at least it's all done, and I'm on track with everything, and I've got a load more stuff to do tomorrow, so there we go. But now I've got to do some more work now because... Jen has a new book that she's working on, and she wants me to edit some of the stuff for her. And that's fine, I, I, I do that, I have no problem with that. But I have to get it done now because I've got work that's coming up, so I'm off to do that. I really am falling asleep on feet. I have to get this done, I need caffeine, so I'm going to cut the shot today. It's going to be a very short one, unless I can manage to get some of the footage from to the live stream. Otherwise, I'll have to have a, a look at that tomorrow, and you'll end up with the speeches I made at tonight's uh, council meeting in tomorrow's vlog. We'll see how it goes anyway. So if this is short, I'm really sorry, but these things happen. It's been a long day, and I need to get on. Bye.